Hey, what's up everybody? Hammer Heart Metal Reviews here once again. Today we're doing a new edition in my series where I'm counting down my favorite albums of the decade. I did my top 10 albums of the 70s last month and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite albums from the 80s. So from 1980 to 1989. When I did the 70s, I only did a top 10, but I'm realizing now as I was putting together this list, a top 10 just isn't enough. Even doing the 70s, 10 wasn't enough. I should have done a top 25. So I'm going to be doing a top 25 here today. Just too many albums that I want to talk about that are amazing. And even just limiting to 25, it's almost fucking impossible. I have to leave so many bands and albums off of this list, but that's just what it is. I mean, that's the fun in doing this. It's not to say that if something isn't on here that I don't really dig it. Limiting to only 25, I mean, there's only so many albums I can talk about. As with the last edition in this series, I am only limiting to one album per band, so you're not going to see the same band repeated a bunch of times here. So some of these choices is really tough even just to pick which album by which band I was going to include. And I mean, these are just off the top of my head. There's probably some I'm just not thinking of that you'll mention in the comments. I'm like, oh man, that should have been in there. But nonetheless, I always love to get your comments down below. Definitely give me your picks. Let me know which ones I've missed. Give me your top 10 or top 25. And let me know what you thought of these picks anyway. So without further ado, let's just get into this. My top 25 albums from the 80s. So just kicking it off. Just cracking the list in at number 25, I'm going with Riot and their album Thundersteel from 1988. So this album was definitely faster and heavier than anything that they had done before. This really brought in like a power metal vibe to their material. If you've never heard these guys before, for this album specifically, think like Painkiller era Judas Priest, but this came out before Painkiller, so I'm not even... Wouldn't even be surprised if Judas Priest was a little bit influenced by this album here when they created Painkiller because it's got that same kind of vibe, just fast, in-your-face, aggressive U.S. power metal here. The title track, Thunder Steel, absolute all-time classic. Flight of the Warrior is great as well. All in all, just really solid stuff. Easy choice. Well, I don't want to say easy choice. It just cracked the list. Some other ones could have gone in here. But yeah, just cracking the list in at 25. Speaking of Judas Priest, they're up next at number 24. I'm going with Screaming for Vengeance from 1982. This was really tough when I'm talking 80s Priest. For me, it's always either between Screaming for Vengeance or Defenders of the Faith. I went with Screaming for Vengeance, but it's really toss-up either way. They're right on par with each other. There was some albums sandwiched in between and around that maybe aren't as good. I mean, this is the follow-up to Point of Entry, and that one I found was really lacking, but this was a really great comeback, nice return to form with songs like Electric Eye, the title track Scream for Vengeance is great, just all, all front to back, a solid Priest album. Me personally, I like 70s era Priest the best, but the 80s still had some solid albums, and this one is definitely right up there. Up next at number 23, I'm going with Dio. The album I'm going with might be a surprise. I'm going with Dream Evil from 1987. Could have easily gone with Holy Diver here. That's obviously the more impactful and monumental like landmark metal album. But for me personally, I lean a little bit more towards Dream Evil. Just some of the tracks kind of bring me coming back to it a little bit more. Like All the Fools Sailed Away. Easily my favorite Dio song ever made. The title track Dream Evil is great. This is not a knock on Holy Diver. It could be here in basically the same spot. I'm just going with Dream Evil for personal preference. But man, I mean, yeah, Holy Diver could be here easily. It's got more hits on that album, more memorable songs, maybe. But nonetheless, these are just my personal preferences, like I said. So Dream Evil it is in at number 23. Up next at number 22, I am going with Metallica and Ride the Lightning from 1984. So this, yeah, absolutely monumental album, regardless of what I think of Metallica these days. This is still a great thrash album. Could have gone with Kill 'Em All here as well. It's always a toss-up for me and even Puppets. But yeah, Ride the Lightning just stands the test of time. You got songs like Fade to Black, Creeping Death, Trapped Under Ice, just hit after hit after hit. Regardless of what you think of them, this album deserves its spot on this list. Easily one of the most monumental albums ever made, and that's why it's in here in at number 22. Up next at number 21, I'm going with Crimson Glory and their album Transcendence from 1988. So this is like some progressive metal, hints of power metal and just traditional metal in there. 
The guitar work on this album is amazing and just insanely good vocals by Midnight. His vocals here are top-notch stuff. Their debut album is great, and this one even dials it up a notch. Like, this is so underrated. Think of a band like Queensryche. This would get tons of comparisons to that. But I honestly like this even more than any of the Queensryche material. I just really dig this. Lady of Winter is one of the be their best songs on this album. Lonely was their single, which they have a music video for. Just all in all, really awesome stuff. Another one I think is a bit underrated. Get definitely go check out Crimson Glory if you have not. All right, now we're into the top 20. Just cracking the top 20, I'm going with Carcass and their album Symphonies of Sickness from 1989. So this is their sophomore album, and wow, huge step up from the debut in my opinion. The debut was more just pure like grind, really short songs, the production was fucking terrible. Here you could actually hear what's going on, still has the huge grind influence, but started bringing in more of a straight old school death metal influence as well, and just catchy ass riffs and songs here, exhumed to consume, ruptured impurulence, these riffs are going to stick in your head, it's got the trade off between the low vocals and the high vocals, absolutely love it, one of my favorite Carcass albums, had to be on this list. Up next at number 19, let's go with the legend, Ozzy fucking Osbourne, Diary of a Madman from 1981. So his sophomore solo album, Randy Rhodes' farewell album before he tragically passed away, and it's just got some of the most memorable Aussie songs ever. Over the Mountain, easily my favorite Aussie song. The title track, Diary of a Madman, the guitar work there is great. Just all in all, a solid heavy metal album. 80s metal summed up, you could point to this album, just awesome stuff easy choice for my list up next at number 18 I'm going with candle mass and epicus dumicus metallicus from 1986 this is another one that was a toss-up between a couple albums it's always been between this one and nightfall for me for my favorite candle mass albums their first two albums just absolutely amazing i'd slightly lean towards the debut here but if you had nightfall here instead no complaints from me the vocals are better on nightfall in my opinion but um, this album just, they came out of the gates firing, just epic doom, they set the template, this is the, like, epic heavy metal, epic doom landmark album, you can't really beat this, they pretty much invented the style, and you've just got songs like Solitude, probably my favorite Camel Mass song, Demon's Gate is great as well, like, all in all, solid fucking album, had to be on this list. Up next at number 17, I'm going with Wasp and their self-titled debut album from 1984. So, of course, being a list from the 80s, there has to be some, like, hair metal on here. I think this is the only hair metal album that I have on this list. Almost put a couple others on here, but Wasp has always been my favorite in this specific subgenre of metal. They've always had a little bit of a harder edge to them. And this debut album, wow, every single song hits the mark. Just classic after classic. Love Machine, Sleeping in the Fire, Tormentor, every single goddamn song is so catchy. The riffs are great, the vocals are great. Say what you will about Wasp and about hair metal, but man, go listen to this album. Regardless of what you think, this album's gonna floor you. It's fucking great in a number 17. Up next at number 16, I'm going with a severely underrated band, in my opinion, Sirith Ungal, and their album King of the Dead from 1984. So I'm sure this is no surprise to longtime viewers of this channel, my love for Sirith Ungal. They're just so great, combines epic heavy metal, epic doom into something so unique. The vocals are what really make this band stand out. No one sounds like him here, Tim Baker, just got such a great unique voice. Such an underrated band, I still feel like they need more love. This is even tough to choose which album, but I've always been partial to King of the Dead as their best. The title track, King of the Dead, is great. Finger of Scorn is another long epic. Like, this whole album just kicks ass. Definitely go check them out if you have not. All right, into the top 15 now. It's getting juicier here. And at number 15, I'm going with Manowar and their album Hail to England from 1984. So, wow, this is just pure heavy metal. Absolutely classic stuff, and in my opinion, this is easily their best album. Pretty much every song hits the mark, other than maybe the weird instrumental in there. But other than that, like, catchy song after catchy song, hit after hit, Blood of My Enemies, the title track, Hail to England, Kill With Power, 
die, die. <laughs> Eric Adams' vocals are so goddamn good, and Ross the Boss's riffing was still um, so amazing here. They should have never got rid of him. All their best albums were with Ross the Boss. Huge mistake, in my opinion. It went downhill after that, but these early albums, absolutely amazing, and Hail to England is no exception. Easily my favorite by the band. Up next at number 14, let's come back with some more thrash with Testament and their sophomore album, The New Order, from 1988. This is another tough one. Could have gone with The Legacy, their debut, but I've always kind of leaned towards The New Order. It's so close, though. This album just kicks ass. So many catchy songs. You've got Into the Pit, possibly my favorite Testament song. Disciples of the Watch, the title track, The New Order. Just so thrashy and aggressive, so fast, but catchy at the same time. Absolutely amazing. Easy choice for this list. Up next at number 13, go with the all-time classic legendary band Black Sabbath and their album Heaven and Hell from 1980. So this is the first album where Ozzy was gone and they brought in Ronnie James Dio and wow, it this came out to be one of their best albums. It just took them to a different place. It didn't have the same vibe as their older stuff. Bringing in Dio, they were able to do some different things vocally and songwriting wise and it just worked so goddamn well the title track heaven and hell absolutely amazing epic song die young is great children of the sea like all in all this is just amazing stuff here very easy choice this could have easy, even been higher but from here on out like all of these are so good it's tough to rank these don't necessarily uh put too much stock in the ranking from here on out they're all just amazing albums but let's keep it going in at number 12, another all-time classic album, Morbid Angel, with their debut, Altars of Madness, from 1989. Wow, what a debut. One of the best debut death metal albums of all goddamn time. This is an absolute death metal staple. Landmark album. Songs like Maze of Torment, Chapel of Ghouls. Trey Isaacs Thoth's guitar playing is amazing. David Vincent's vocals are actually legible, which for early death metal wasn't always the case. But man, absolutely amazing debut album. Very easy choice to be on this list. Up next at number 11, I am going with Sabotage and Hall of the Mountain King from 1987. This is a hard one to pinpoint a genre. It brings in elements of progressive metal, power metal, just traditional heavy metal. And wow, this is the Olivia Brothers masterpiece. You've got John Oliva and Chris Oliva. The vocals by John are absolutely amazing. He hits such high pitches. And Chris Oliva, one of the most underrated guitar players ever, was taken from us too early. But wow, this is their masterpiece. Like, you might have heard some other albums and not been that into it. You have to go listen to this. This is an all-time heavy metal classic. One of the best albums ever. The title track, Hall of the Mountain King. Wow. 24 Hours Ago, Strange Wings. This whole goddamn album slays absolutely masterworking guitar and vocals and just songwriting. Go check it out. Just missed out on my top 10, but easily could have been there any given day. All right, now we're into the top 10, my 10 favorite albums from the 80s. In 10th place, I am going with Merciful Fate and Don't Break the Oath. Got the poster of that one right there. This album is from 1984 and wow. King Diamond's vocals really set them apart. This is like new st the new wave of British heavy metal style, but sped up and just put their own vibe on it. It gets lumped in as like first wave of black metal. To me, there's not much black metal here other than the coarse paint and satanic imagery and lyric content. But musically, this is just really fast and melodic. The twin guitar parts are amazing. And King Diamond's vocals, just fucking awesome. Desecration of Souls, The Oath, Come to the Sabbath, hit after hit after hit, this album kicks fucking ass. Could have even been higher than 10, but from here on out, this top 10 is insanely hard to rank. These are insane albums, so goddamn good. For today, it's in at number 10. Up next at number 9, I'm going back to, with some more thrash with Megadeth. And Peace Sells But Who's Buying from 1986. Absolute thrash metal masterpiece. One of my favorite thrash albums of all time. I do lean slightly towards Rust in Peace, but that's from the 90s, so that's not on this list. But uh, yeah, this is probably my second favorite Megadeth album, and wow, riffs on display throughout. Mustaine's vocals, you can take them or leave them, I guess. I personally really dig them, especially in these early records. And wow, Wake Up Dead, Peace Cells, Devil's Island, just amazing, amazing stuff. Absolutely great album in a number nine. 
Up next at number eight, and going with another underrated band in my opinion, and that is Manila Road with The Deluge from 1986. So this was another very tough one to pick which album could be Open the Gates, could be Crystal Logic, Mystification, but for me, The Deluge tops them all. The drumming is nuts, the riffing is a little faster when they started incorporating a little bit of thrash into their sound, but this is still not a thrash album. There's just hints of it in some of the riffs, but this is just pure epic heavy metal and it kicks so much ass. The guitar work on this album is absolutely amazing. Songwriting skills on full display. The vocals I know are not going to be for everyone, but take some time with it. Once it clicks, you'll be like, oh my god, this is actually fucking amazing. And this album it stands the test of time. This needs more love. Please go listen to this if you have not. Give it a chance. Manila Road needs more love. They are fucking amazing. Shadow in the Black. Hammer of the Witches. Friction in Mass. Just so epic and awesome and catchy. Amazing album in a number eight. All right, up next at number seven, one of my all-time favorite bands, Blind Guardian with Follow the Blind from 1989. So this was their sophomore album. This is where they were still just pretty much straight in your face speed metal band. They hadn't really started incorporating the power metal or progressive leanings of their later material yet. But wow, I absolutely love this era of the band too. Got some of their best songs ever like Banished from Sanctuary, Damned for All Time, Valhalla. Come on, all of those are on this album. How is this not even higher than seventh? It's just because the next six are even <laughs> just as good, if not better. But man... You want some just straight up speed metal that is amazing and catchy with great vocals? Look no further. Follow the blind kicks fucking ass in at number seven. All right. In at number six, I'm going with Heavy Load and Death or Glory from 1982. Another severely underrated band that needs more love. Like, I could have put this even higher. This is full of hooks. It is so catchy. Like, this, these guitar lines are going to stick in your head. And the vocal hooks... They're so memorable. Like, these guys know how to write a catchy chorus. And this is just traditional heavy metal that is absolutely amazing. Arguably Sweden's first heavy metal band. And wow, amazing stuff. This is my favorite album by them. And it is just, it stands the test of time. I feel like it needs more love. Favorite songs on here. The Guitar Is My Sword. probably my favorite heavy load song. Just go check that out if you've never heard them before. You will be singing along in no time. Something New is great, Heavy Metal, Angels, all in all, front to back, such a catchy album, amazing stuff. All right, now we're into the top five, my five favorite albums from the 80s. Whew, this is really tough, even the ranking, I'm looking at them now, I'm like, ah, should I switch any spots? I don't know, I'll just go with what I have written down, but every day these next five would change. For today, in in fifth place, I'm going to go with the band on the shirt I am wearing, Halloween with Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 1 from 1987. So this is just a power metal all-time classic album, arguably one of the first like pure European power metal albums out there, and one of the best. It stands the test of time. The song Halloween, the long epic, absolutely amazing. Does it get any better than that? I don't really know. One of the best power metal songs ever. The Tale That Wasn't Right is a great ballad. You got other great songs like I'm Alive. This whole album just kicks ass. Absolutely love it. Very easy choice to be high on my list in a number five. Moving it right along, up next at number four, one of my all-time favorite bands, Bathory with Blood Fire Death from 1988. This was another very tough one for which album to pick. If I'm looking at just their 80s material, it was either going to be Blood, Fire, Death, or Under the Sign of the Black Mark. I feel like Under the Sign of the Black Mark is one of the best, like, pure early black metal albums ever. Blood, Fire, Death is still a black metal album, but they started bringing in more epic nature. You could tell that they were going in a different direction on subsequent albums, bringing in the Viking themes and just general more epic nature. But wow. One of the best albums ever, A Fine Day to Die and Bloodfire Death, the songs that kind of bookend the album. Two of the just most epic black metal songs of all time, but it's not just about those two songs. You've got songs like Pace to Death, For All Those Who Died, just amazing, amazing stuff. Like I said, could have gone with Under the Sign of the Black Mark here, pretty much would be in the same place. I love both of these albums almost equally, but I went with Bloodfire Death for today. All right, three more to go. If you've seen this channel before, you could probably take some guesses at what's coming up in these top three, but here we go. Let's see what the order is. Coming in third place for today, I'm going with Iron Maiden and Power Slate from 1984. 
one of my all-time favorite bands with my favorite album by them. This song album is just full of some of their best songs, Aces High, the title track Power Slave, and of course, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, my favorite Maiden song. Epic, long song to close the album off. It doesn't get any better than that. You put that song on an album, it propels it to the top spot, basically. I just absolutely love this album to death. Could have even been higher than three, but for today, it's in at number three. All right, two more to go. Let's see what's it going to be. Maybe I got a little hint over here with this poster right there. Death Leprosy 1988 is in, in second place. So, wow. In my opinion, probably the best death metal album ever made, at least in the old school death metal variety. This is just the landmark album. Yeah, Scream Bloody Gore came out first, but this took the songwriting up a notch. The solos got better. The songwriting got better. They would go more progressive and complex directions later in their career. But here, this is just pure old school death metal with great solos, great vocals. Everything about this album I love to death. Favorite songs on here, the title track, Leprosy, Pull the Plug, all-time classic, Open Casket, every single song here fucking rules death leprosy easy choice to be high up on my list could have even been in the number one spot but for today it's in at number two so that just leaves one my favorite album from the 80s take a second see if you can guess it drum roll favorite album king diamond abigail 1987 this is, in my opinion, one of the best heavy metal albums ever made in the history of time, not just from the 80s. This is where his first album where he went full concept. The musicianship on display on this album is just next level. The production is perfect. You can hear every instrument, and it's so well performed. The solos by Andy LaRock here are next level. And of course, King Diamond's vocals, once again, are what really steal the show. Sings like no one else can. Those falsettos are amazing. The way he tells this whole story over the course of the album. Ah, it had to be King Diamond here in the top spot. It just had to be. Favorite tracks on here, I mean the whole goddamn album, but 7th Day of July, 1777. Abigail, The Black Horseman is probably my favorite King Diamond song. Arrival. Every song here hits the mark. I don't want to say easy choice for number one, but I knew it was going to be in the mix. And this one is just one of the best metal albums of all time. So it's in at number one for my favorites from the 80s for today. So anyways, these are just my thoughts and opinions as usual. Like I said earlier, I'd love to get yours down below. Let me know what you thought of these picks. And until next time, Hammerheart Metal Reviews. Out.